This presentation concerns magnesium in the treatment of depression. My name is George Evie. I'm going to present a slideshow. I will not say very much during this presentation because there's no way that I can convey in words what these slides show in the amount of time that we're given, which is less than 10 minutes. I think the problem with depression is simply we don't have enough magnesium in the diet. It's caused by food technology. A lot of these foods are really considered called depleted foods. Stress is a real killer in today's society. It drives down magnesium unmercifully. Calcium and magnesium have vital functions in the brain, but there has to be balance. The neurons require magnesium. They control calcium in the neurons. Specifically, the NMDA receptors. Perhaps you can see the location of magnesium between the presynapse and the postsynapse. The junctions, it is, it, its primary function is to block the entrance of calcium. Magnesium in depression has a history of, in research animals. It's very clear that magnesium deficiency will cause depression and that depression can be treated with magnesium. Unfortunately, in human research, the biggest study done was in 1921. And unfortunately, there hasn't been very much since then in humans. But the, the, the studies that have been done are in small st studies, not, not conclusive large clinical trials, but little ones. It's an intracellular mineral. And consequently, it doesn't really show up in the extracellular plasma. In severe, de severe depression, ser serotonin metabolites and magnesium are low in cerebral spinal fluid. Brain magnesium is always low in treatment resistant depression using phosphorus nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Treatment with depression with magnesium is extremely effective in many ways. Like I said, it's the small scale published reports that are revealing there are no large studies. If you Google magnesium depression, you get an impressive 2.5 million pages. Googling Prozac doesn't give you that much. And the medical literature only provides about 70 articles. Psychiatrists know nothing about magnesium. And interestingly enough, psychiatrists have a very high incidence of suicide. It's the highest in the world by profession in female Psychiatrists have 12% suicide rate. Ignorance kills. What can I say? If they don't know, they can't take care of themselves. They certainly can't take care of us. They just don't know. Uh, and there's a lot of money involved, and there's state medical boards, and then plasma magnesium is kind of a uh, is always mislead is misleading to physicians. There's no one to defend the public. We have to know it ourselves or we just don't know it. We're just going to have to eat better. We're going to have to eat foods that have magnesium in it. We're going to have to use biologically available magnesium. Or, if you want to be depressed, eat all the goodies. You know, like cookies and pasta and cake and white bread. All the magnesium has been taken out. This is a wild list of minor 
magnesium deficit mental disorders, very common things like insomnia, headaches, uh, all sorts of things that we see as normal. Uh, moderate magnesium deficits produce more severe disorders like anxiety and convulsions and uh, seasonally affective disorder, even IQ loss. Uh, this is what we're concerned about, severe magnesium deficits. They're the ones that cause the depressions and the severe suicidal ideations and even suicide. Well, in all, each of these cases, you have a case of declining mental health over a period of years before severe depression sets in. It, it appears to reflect the severity of the magnesium uh, deficiency in the brain. Now, it's inconceivable to doctors that one thing can cause all this many, th all this many problems. And it's also really inconceivable that one thing, magnesium, could take care of all these things. Oh, laws against mental health. Yes, we have lots of laws that prevent us from doing the right thing. Dosage? It's not much. 125 to 300 milligrams of magnesium with each meal at bedtime for a while. You know, for smaller people, give them less. I like magnesium glycinate best because the glycine is also involved in this process. Taurine is also involved in this process and you need more of it. But discuss these dosages with your physician because I'm not a physician. Now, another thing that we have to do to really improve our mental health is to reduce calcium and neurotoxic monosodium glutamate and aspartame. You can do this by eating better foods and don't use magnesium glutamate or aspartate. Side effects can occur from too much, too much magnesium, mainly uh, it's uh, 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 diarrhea caused by candida albicans. You have, need to prevent these side effects, prevent the diarrhea best you can. Uh, Indol-3 carbonyl, kefir, calcium, biotin, inulin, probiotics, antifungalates, all are helpful in this treatment. For more information, just take a look at my webpage, which is georgebresearch.com, HTML, depression-anxiety, HTML. It's a 180-page report, and linked from that page are uh, medical journal articles, and I think there's about 200 references in there. This is uh, lots of well-referenced material, but it's, there's not very many major clinical trials with humans. Uh, now I think it's better to avoid the mental health issues with magnesium. If you have headaches and insomnia and apathy and irritability, maybe a little bit of confusion, be careful because these things will get worse and eventually you'll have anxiety and memory loss, hallucinations, and you might even get down into depression or even into suicidal ideation and even suicide. I think it's better to prevent these than to treat them.